So we're going to do 7-16 flexible budgets. This is a company that manufactures tires for Formula One motor racing circuit. For August, it budgeted to manufacture and sell 4,000 tires at a variable cost of $77 per tire. So I'm just going to put, we've got a revenue, I've got units. So units are 4,000. That's what they were budgeted. So I got budgeted. And then the revenue, they don't say. So it says here that a variable cost, most likely for manufacturing or for unit cost, but I'll say manufacturing, was $77 per tire. And then they said fixed costs. So fixed costs are supposed to be $64,000. And then they said the budgeted selling price was $115 per tire. Actual results. So here we go. We've got actual were 3,800 tires manufactured and sold, $117 per tire. The actual variable cost, so they have 304, 123, and I'm going to divide it by the 3,800 is $80. And then the actual total fix was 62. Oh, so this is it. So we can look at the contribution margin here. That's what the contribution margin should have been. This is what the contribution margin actually was. And of course, if I wanted to do the total, but I'm not going to do that right now. It says to prepare a performance report similar to the 7-6. So I have 7-6 here that uses a flexible budget and a static budget. Comment on the results. So right here, I'm going to start doing the actual right here. And then I'm going to do the flexible budget variance. I'm going to do the flexible budget right here. I'm going to do the sales volume variance. And here I'm going to do the static budget. And I'm going to do the same thing that they have here. They have units sold. They have revenue. They have variable costs. They have the contribution margin. They have the fixed costs. And they have the operating income. So we're doing the exact same thing here, but I'm going to pull from my my area here so that if I want to change something, it'll automatically adjust everything. So I've got the actual units sold. I've got the revenue and I want to do total. So I'm going to do the actual units sold and I'm going to freeze this and I'm going to multiply it by the actual 117. There we go. 117. Perfect. Uh, the variable cost, I'm going to do the actual. So I'm going to take this again. Oh, actually, you know what? I can probably just pull it down. And it'll automatically do what I want it to do. But let's see what happens. Yes, this is perfect. I'm going to do the contribution margin. I'm going to subtract it. There we go. I want the actual fixed costs. And you know what? I'm going to move these fixed costs up one so that it is in the same place. There you go. So actual fixed costs over here. And then I've got the operating income. And here's my operating income. Now, I know this won't work, but I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste over here and I know that I'm going to have some problem. Flexible budget, the units sold have to be identical to the actual. So I'm going to do the identical to the actual. This one right here, I know I'm going to have to do the budgeted amount. So everything is going to have to be budgeted here and I'm going to move this. There we go. I'll move this here. Not that it matters, but here we go. Now I can just pull this down it should do the budgeted. Yes, it does. There's my contribution margin. And then here, I want it to do the budgeted fixed cost. Now, flexible budget. Remember, I'm using actual units with all budgeted base information. So actual units, but I'm using budgeted revenue. Actual units, but I'm using budgeted variable costs. Budgeted fixed costs. I don't ever use the actual here. So this tells us what caused the variances if the units were identical. And that's what we should be doing. We should be calculating apples to apples. I have this number of actual units, so I'm going to use this number of actual units when I calculate the flexible budget. So this now tells me what the variance is. Now, some people say, well, it's always got to be actual minus the, the flexible budget. 
And then the negative number is going to tell you something. I'm not a proponent of that at all. I simply take this and I copy it all the way down. And I don't care if it's negative or positive. It's not telling me any piece of information as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to insert. And so instead, what I do is I think to myself, I sold $444,000 worth of revenue. And I thought I was only going to do 437. So this is awesome. I made more money than I thought I was going to, right? So I'd rather think it through and critically evaluate it than just automatically say, if it's a negative number, it means this. And if it's a positive number, it means that. I don't give a crap. I just want to know what should I have spent on the variable cost? What did I spend on the variable cost? Is this good or bad? Obviously, this is bad. It is terrible, right? I spent more. Now, my favorable was 7,600. My unfavorable was 11,400. Well, guess what? That sucks. It's unfavorable. Over here, I should have spent $64,000. I only spent $62,000. Wow, that's awesome. Now, my unfavorable is 3,800. My favorable is 2,000. Guess what? This is unfavorable because my unfavorable was larger. Now, here, I don't know whether this was a material variance in direct material? Was it a labor variance in direct labor? Was it a direct material price variance or a direct material quantity variance? Was it a direct labor price variance, a direct labor quantity variance, right? Those things I can't tell here. Similarly down here, I can't tell if it was a price variance for the fixed uh, costs or was it a quantity variance for the fixed costs? I can't tell. This is telling me certain information, but it's not telling me everything that I want to know. All right, so I'm just going to center these and I'm going to bold them. So now what I can also do is look at the static budget and the static budget keeps everything static. So here I'm going to take this, I'm going to freeze it, I'm going to multiply it by the 115. So I am only going to use budgeted information here. So I'm going to go all the way down, I'm going to use budgeted information only. Here, I can't do this. It's going to be just 64, okay? And then this minus this is equal to that, okay? So now I'm not comparing apples to apples anymore. This is 4,000, everything at 4,000, and this is everything at 3,800. So when I do this variance, and again, I don't care how the variance is calculated, whether I subtract one from the other, negative and positive numbers are gonna tell me nothing because I don't care. I'm not memorizing, you know, how I should calculate this. I'm just going to calculate it all the way down and I'm going to calculate it up. Okay. What is the only important piece of information here? The in only important piece of information is this. That's it. No other piece of information is important. And I'll tell you why no other piece of information is important. It's because I can't compare well, I can. I, the The reason this is a different, because don't forget, we're using the same base. I'm using 115. I'm using 115. I'm using 77. I'm using 77. You know, I'm using 64. I'm using 64. Okay. The only piece of information this is really giving me is the fact that I have an unfavorable variance for my number of units. So all the rest of this is really telling me nothing. I know that this is going to be unfavorable. This is going to be favorable. Of course, it's going to be favorable. I'm all, I'm using $77. It's favorable because I didn't sell 4,000 units. So of course, at $77, because both of these are $77, this is going to be favorable. It saved me money. Well, yeah, it saved me money, but it saved me money because I sold less. And I'm making the same base assumptions. These are the only numbers I'm using. I'm not using anything else. So when I look at this, this is unfavorable and this is favorable. Unfavorable is bigger, so this is unfavorable. This is never going to have a variance because guess what? If I take 64 static budget and I use that 64 in the flexible budget, it means that my fixed expenses will always have a zero. And then of course, unfavorable minus no unfavorable, nothing is gonna be unfavorable, okay? So keep in mind 
what we're calculating here, right? All of this stuff is literally telling me nothing. These variances, it, it's telling me nothing. It's just telling me what I should have known conceptually is if I was supposed to sell 4,000 and I only sold 3,800 and I'm using all the same base information, of course, these things are going to be true. So in the textbook, they talk about these variances having names, right? So if I compare this to this, right? I know that the difference between these two is going to be $1,800. That $1,800, I know it is unfavorable. How do I know that? Because I just calculated it. It's right here. It's unfavorable. We know it's unfavorable, right? This has a name to it. This is called the total flexible budget variance. Okay. And it's a valuable tool to use because I'm using actual here and calculating all the actuals. I'm using the same actual here, calculating all of this using budget. So it's giving me a good amount of information. It still doesn't tell me whether it was due to direct materials or direct labor, right? Or potentially variable overhead variances and fixed overhead variances. It doesn't tell me that, but it does tell me an important piece of information because we are both using actuals. Over here, I can do the exact same thing. And I can say that this is going to be 7,600 and it is going to be unfavorable. There is a name to this variance. It is called the total sales volume variance. And of course, it sucks. It's negative because I sold less. So of course, if I sold less and I use all the same base information, I'm going to always end up with an unfavorable total sales volume variance. All right. So now two says comment on the results of requirement one. Well, I'm like, I can go over here and I can make some comments. I can say we sold 200 less units than, than we thought we would, right? And I'm going to specifically talk about here, okay? Um, so we sold them for how many dollars less? or more. Oh, we sold them for how many dollars more? Right. Because it was favorable, right? $2 more each, which is favorable. Hence, we got the 7,600 favorable outcome. So we bought the tires for, and here we go, we bought the tires for $3 more which is unfavorable. Well, we knew that was unfavorable because we could figure it out right here. It was unfavorable, okay? And we spent $2,000 less than expected on fixed costs which is favorable. Well, we knew that right here also, right? It's not like it was any surprise. And we can see that the total, the total flexible budget variance was unfavorable because those additional costs here of $3 per unit for 3,800 units outweighed the $2 benefit from selling it for more and the $2,000 benefit from having lower fixed costs. Okay. We can also go over here and we can only say one thing. This is all, like it all stems from this one thing. We sold 200 less units, which caused an overall unfavorable variance of $7,600. And if we sell less units, it will always be unfavorable because the fixed costs are identical and because the variable costs are variable. If we sell less, this number 
forever and ever will be unfavorable. Okay? Everything stems from that. All right. That's it for this question.